head coach Cliff Godwin, players Zach Agnos and Josh Moylan. We'll let Cliff open with a statement and then we'll go to the players. Man, what a, what a college baseball game. Um, that was, uh, you know, uh, right down to the last second. Uh, coach O'Connor and, and I were on the USA uh, staff in 2018. He's been a great friend of mine and, and just so appreciative of his friendship. And then Coach Mack, you guys know what I think about that guy and um, what he's meant to me. Um, he's a mentor of mine and um, just a great game. I thought our guys were just really gritty. Um, Mayhew, um, I thought, did a really good job. That That's a really good offense over there. And Coach Mack does a really good job with those guys. And we just, you know, kept passing the ball. Sailor, Spivey, and then Zach was able to close it out. Um, thought early on we would get some good swings off their starter, and then he kind of settled in. Uh, Josh had a big swing. Um, Justin Wilcox had a big swing. But uh, a big play was, you know, A-Mac walking, and then we were trying to bunt, and the uh, ball got by the catcher, and the rider got the bunt down. Um, the ninth inning plays out a lot differently if we don't get that run in with Zach, and, and Zach's defense was tremendous. And, man, what can I say about our crowd? <laughs> Golly. Um, uh, like I've coached, I've coached in the SEC, and, and that's as loud a, a crowd that I've ever been a part of. And I didn't think that we could beat last year, um, and we did tonight. It was it was crazy. It was extremely loud in a great college baseball atmosphere. So I appreciate Power Nation coming out, and please come back out tomorrow and be loud. So, uh, but so proud of our guys. I mean, I mean it wasn't easy by any means, and they just gritted it out. Questions for the players. Zach, you did the video baseball different here. How different was it tonight here? Uh, it's it's incredible. Um, you know, playing a great opponent like UVA, man, uh, that's uh, that's why you come here. You come here to play big time teams and big time moments and regionals, super regionals, and hats off to them, man. They they fought every single pitch up until the last pitch, man. They're they're a gritty team. They're a great team. They got a team full of ball players, and um, yeah, it was just a really fun night, and it meant a lot. I mean. Broke the broke the uh, crowd record, which was pretty special, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Special, yeah. That's pretty special, yeah. man. And uh, you know, now I got something just to uh, talk junk about the Jake. So, <laughs> <laughs> Zach, can you just touch on you know Virginia guy beating Virginia? Um, there's nothing really to it. Um, my uncle played at Virginia Tech, and it's always kind of my sister uh, Katie and my brother John went to VT, so I kind of. Grew up not liking UVA, but I have great respect for their program, great respect for Coach O'Connor. Um, when Coach Goblin was there, Jake uh, played with Coach O'Connor on Team USA, and uh, Jake couldn't say enough great things about him. Just what a great coach he was, what a great guy he was, and um, you know, it shows. I mean, they're a consistent program every single year that's uh, uh, knocking on the door to Omaha. Zach, in that situation in the ninth, like, are you looking for the dugout saying you want to pitch, or is Cliff like giving you any uh, uh, heads up, or is it, is it just when he walks out with the glove, that's when you know? Uh, I mean, I have an idea. He tells me to warm up. Uh, I told him on the way up here. I was like, I was trying not to throw up on the mound. Uh, that's a joke. I never had a doubt. Never. But uh, he kept telling me just breathe, stay in the moment. You know, we work a lot on that, man. And it's really easy knowing that your defense is going to make any play behind you. You know, I just got to put it over the plate. Um, and like I said, man, the, their hitters were not easy to get out. Like, they're, uh, I was in a two-strike count with that last guy, and I felt like it was a 3-0 count, honestly. Like, they were still up there doing damage, and I feel like anything I threw them, just would, they just get out of there. So, uh, hats off to them. Josh, your, your home run kind of kicked off the scoring and uh, must have party in the stands. So, what was it like when you made contact and kind of take that moment in as you're on base? Uh, I mean, it, it just felt great. I got the pitch I was looking for, and uh, – Put a good swing on it, and honestly, I didn't really feel it much because I, I got it pretty good. But uh, <clears throat> off the bat, you know, I just I knew instantly, and I was like, "This is it's pretty awesome." And Zach brought it up and said, so "Coach, the crowd was unbelievable." So to be able to do something like that in front of that kind of crowd, I mean, I feel like it just set the tone for the whole game and gave us all the momentum moving forward. Josh, you've been playing great baseball since the postseason started. Can you put a finger on what's been working well for you? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's just kind of forgetting the regular season. So once you move into the postseason, it doesn't really matter what you did for the last however many months before because, I mean, nobody honestly keeping track of the stats anymore, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. we're in the postseason. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of putting that all aside and just focus on coming in and, you know, just trying to do what I can to help the team every day moving forward in the postseason. You said you got the pitch you wanted. You hit the first pitch, right? Mm -hmm. Just talk about what your mindset was going into that at bat then. Well, going in with the scouting report, we knew he had a good fastball and we knew he'd have some arm side. So I uh, I was on the plate and then I ended up getting one that started middle and kind of leaped towards the inner third. 
that I was on time for basketball, so I got the pitch I was looking for and just put a good swing on. Any more questions for the players? Yeah, Zach, that, that play at shortstop, you know, you leaped up, kind of got your probably max vertical, but it's kind of snow coned it. Like, what, what did that feel like when the ball hit your glove? Uh, it felt surreal, honestly. Uh, I turned to star, a Starling after. I said I needed every quarter of an inch of my 32 and a half inch vertical <laughs> on that play. Uh, it was just awesome, and you know, making a play for our guys is, uh, I mean, Sailor, you know, he's, he's been our guy, and Spy, I mean, he's been one of our guys. He's pitched a lot this year, and taking the stress off the pitching, man, just to let him pitch deeper in the games is huge, and um, I'm glad I could help out. Um, it was just, like I said, it was, it was surreal. I felt like it was going to launch out of my glove, but pinched it. Yeah. You made a good play the bat, uh, at bat before that, coming in and charging a, a ground ball, I think, and, and getting the plate first. Yeah, we, we, we work on those plays. Almost too many times, honestly. <laughs> Sorry, Coach B, but we work on those plays a lot, and it's it's almost like I, I could do it in my sleep. Like it's, uh, you know, and uh, it, it's it's really like I said, it just comes naturally. We work on it so much, and uh, all the credits to Coach Palumbo because he gets us just as prepared as as he could. It's uh, definitely elite and top of the line. Every time UVA uh, scored a run, you guys put one across yourself. The next half inning, how important was it for you guys to? Kind of keep them from maintaining any confidence. It was, it was awesome. It kept the it kept the uh, momentum in our dugout. It it uh, allowed our pitchers to not have to worry about giving up runs, just going out there and putting their best stuff over the plate, and kind of just freed us up. You know, okay, they put up one, we're gonna put up one. Uh, they put up, they hit a solo jack. Jado was gonna hit a solo jack. It, it just it really frees you up and allows you to play your best game of baseball. Last question for the players. Right, good to go. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cliff, you manufactured that last run and you brought in Giles to the bunt and Wilcoxon had hit a home run. Just talk about, you know, answering their score there. And uh... Yeah, you know, Ryder, I mean, look, I, I give – Ryder Giles as much credit about the way this team's played over the past couple months as anybody. A guy that is uh, came in as a shortstop and his mom reminds me that uh, told him that he would never pitch here. Um, you know when we recruited him and to go into the rotation and to just be selfless because once he went into the rotation he couldn't play shortstop anymore because his arm wasn't bouncing back to coming out of the rotation and being a reliever and he's a Swiss Army knight. I mean, and did you see the play that he made yesterday to end the game? I mean, the bare hand play. I mean, he's as good of a defensive shortstop there that I've ever seen, ever coached. And I mean, Zach is right there with him too. Um, but we knew if Amac got on, that, that the call was going to be that we were going to bunt there. And so Ryder was, Ryder was actually down in the bullpen getting his arm loose because if Zach had to come in the game, then he was going to go to shortstop. So I know if we put him in the DH spot, then he could still go to shortstop. So. Um, but my hat's off to Ryder Giles because uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without Ryder. Was it a call play on the pickoff attempt at second in the ninth inning there? Yes, call play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We didn't ex execute it. They did a good job getting back. You, I, I think Trey was warming up in, in the ninth when you, you went to He the had, second. yeah, he, he'd been warming up since like the <laughs> fifth. So mm -hmm. Trey does a good job. And uh, Charlie Hodges is always down there with him, um, just making sure you're not blowing it out. But. You know, Trey's uh, pretty good against right-handed batters, and we feel really confident with uh, Zach against lefties. But, you know, what they did, the spy beam, I mean, that's because Coach Mack, I mean, Coach Mack, uh, he taught me how to hit. So we do kind of the same thing offensively as what they do, and they have a good approach. And when Zach came in, we kind of had to flip our process a little bit because Zach has a really good changeup, but they were sitting on the changeup. And uh, we had to throw more fastballs to lefties than what we have in the past. And, and Zach did a good job of executing those pitches. Coach, uh, Zach, obviously, you know, hell of a baseball player, but just hearing him talk, it's obviously he's got some it factor to some presence about him. How do you kind of describe his impact just on this team and from a clubhouse perspective? Um, you know, he's an energy giver. I mean, what that kid has been through this year with his father um, and still showing up to come to fall practice and play in it. I'll try not to get emotional. I got very emotional at the conference tournament because what Nico meant to me personally and um, what he's meant to this program because he was the energy source for, for me. You know, in this day and age when parents don't always have your back, Nico always had my back. Uh, when I was hard on Jake or I was hard on Zach, Nico would basically tell him to shut up and, hey, coach, coach is going to make you better. And uh, I'll never forget that. And 
um, he was so good to me. But uh, the Agnos family, look at the, the four regionals that we've hosted, the Agnos family with Jake and Zach have been a, been a huge part of it. Uh, Mayhew's always been a multi-inning guy, but the last month or so it seems like he's just made it to a new level. You know, he had the nine-inning outing and earlier a couple weeks ago, now five innings tonight. What has been different with C.J. Mayhew lately? Um, he's been able to land some all-speed pitches, um, you know, more consistently. I mean, his changeup was working good. Um, kept UVA off balance a little bit um, early. I thought that was a, a big key um, for him to be able to go on some length. He actually threw um, a couple sliders. Uh, I think he struck out two on a slider, um, which, you know, is probably his third best pitch, but he was able to get some all-speed pitches out. What are those moments like in the dugout in the – the ninth, when they have the, the base loaded and you and Austin maybe talking about a pitch plan, like, just, do you go through yeah, a lot? Yeah, we, uh, we even told Zach to throw whatever he wanted, one, one pitch, uh, the change up the, to the last guy. And, you know, we're just talking, and I just, because I know what Coach Mack teaches, I knew they were trying to hit the ball the other way against Spivey and against Zach. So we had to, you know, show some fastballs in. I mean, Spivey um, against uh, – off if you look, he stood him up twice with two fastballs in, which, you know, normally that's not Spivey's bread and butter, but I told that kid, I was like, hey, man, if you don't stand him up, like, they're going to they're gonna get to the, the slider or the cutter. And, you know, I thought by him standing him up and in the 3-2 count, he just got him off the end of the bat a little bit with the cutter. Two more questions? Cliff, can you compare this year, you're obviously in the driver's seat, compared to the year that you had to come back from the loss to Quinny Piak and you – you made the run, took a lot out of you. I think it was even a factor going to the Super Regional at Louisville. But this year is a different story. And this team seems to be much more efficient uh, in tournament play, maybe than some teams you've had in the past. Well, we were pretty efficient last year. We won the three games we played, yeah. so we were pretty efficient last year. Compared to the yeah, Well, that Louisville was two, year. yeah, two okay. years ago. Um, look, every team's different. And I've said this a lot, um, no matter – if we win this region or not, this team will go down in my book as one of the best teams ever coached because of where they came from. And people don't understand what those guys have been through. And, and I just kept telling them to keep their head above water and they're going to be tough as leather. And um, they've earned everything they've had. And uh, I know Aaron Fitt and Kendall Rogers and everybody else, they look at our stuff and go, well, they don't have any superstars. They got a bunch of grinders, a bunch of blue collar guys, uh, no starting rotation. I love it because. That's what Coach LeClaire would love. And that's been the coolest thing for me is to just sit back and uh, one of my former teammates, Jeremy Schumacher, texted me and said, hey, get them right tonight. I said, well, I'm going to sit back and not get in the way because they have done a hell of a job the past couple of months just showing up and um, playing team selfless baseball. One more. Um, Aaron, I wouldn't, I'm just messing with you. I think. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, no, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.